I received the new Army Painter Speed Paints early and tested them extensively. Are they really better and cheaper than Contrast or is it just a YouTube hype? I'm Starly from Tale of Painters and here are the good and the maybe not so good things about Speed Paints. The Army Painter sent me the upcoming Speed Paints Mega Set with all 23 Speed Paints, Speed Paint Medium, and a free brush. The Speed Paint Starter Set will be released on February 19, 2022, and this Mega Set will follow in March. Like contrast, individual speed paints contain 80 milliliters of paint, but come in dropper bottles with two mixing balls pre-installed. I have to admit that contrast has changed my painting quite a bit, even though I never actually use it for painting whole miniatures as advertised, but to save time on organic textures and smaller details like all those pouches and belts that won't catch your attention, they are fantastic. They are also great for thinning into washers or glazes. I used contrast glazes to shade this classic 2nd edition ultramarine for example. But we all know, contrast isn't perfect. Some colors do exactly what they are supposed to, like Blood Angels Red and Ayandan Yellow. Base color, shading and highlights with one coat. Other colors are quite thin and feel more like washes, like Aethermatic Blue and Griff Charger Gray. And many of the darker colors are rather flat and hardly create any highlights, like Dark Angels Green and Saigor Brown. The Army Painter promises that Speed Paint is a real one coat paint and provides a consistent feel across the range. The Speed Paint range is very similar to the Contrast palette, even though there are only 23 colors, excluding Speed Paint Medium, whereas Contrast has 35. For this review, I painted Contrast, Speed Paints, Instant Colors from Scale 75 and Antithesis Paints from War Colors on this sheet of plastic card that I primed with Corax White Primer. I photographed the sheet under 5000 and 500k neutral light to reproduce the colors as authentically as possible. Now let's take a look at the individual colors. Zealot Yellow is a little more orange than Ayandan Yellow, Fire Giant Orange a little more Tomato Red. Blood Red and Blood Angels Red are almost identical. Slaughter Red is a bit more crimson and produces slightly more prominent highlights, whereas Flesh Terrors Red is a little darker. Purple Alchemy is clearly darker than Volupus Pink and should perhaps be thinned with a little bit of Speed Paint Medium. Hive Dweller Purple is also slightly darker than Sheish Purple, but dries much less patchy. Magic Blue is a little darker and more intense than Talasar Blue, but with a little thinning it would be very similar. High Lord Blue is a little lighter and more of a Prussian Blue than Ultramarine's Blue, while Cloudburst Blue is very similar to Leviathan Blue. In terms of Turquoise, the Army Painter only has a single color, Plasmatic Bold, which is similar to Aethematic Blue, but much deeper and darker. For greens, we have Malignant Green, a light yellowish olive green that is quite similar to Plague Bearer Flesh. Camo Cloak is similar to Creed Camo, but a bit darker. Orc Skin is like a mix of Warp Lightning and Auroch Flesh. Absolution Green is similar to Dark Angels Green, but the highlights are more visible and the result is smoother. Let's move on to Brown and Bone. Palette Bone is a bit warmer and softer than Skeleton Horde. Hardened Leather is very similar to Gore Grunter Fur, while Sand Golem is a warm light brown. Dark Wood is like a mix of Wild Wood and Saigor Brown. Crusader Skin is a bit more reddish than Gilliman Flesh. For Grayscales we have Holy White, which is a bit darker than Apothecary White, but a softer shadows. It's quite grey, so you might want to thin it down with a little bit of Speed Paint Medium. Runic Grey is very similar to Space Wolf's Grey, while Gravelord Grey is darker than Basilicanum Grey. Grim Black is also a bit darker than Black Templar and has a slightly cool black hue, whereas Black Templar has a slightly greenish black hue. You can download this comparison sheet on our website Tale of Painters, where we also have over 233 painting tutorials for you to choose from. Now it's time to put the new speed paints into practice. The Army Painter recommend their matte white color primer, but for better comparison with contrast I used Grey CS Spray from Games Workshop for both models, which is a light grey primer with a satin finish. The smooth satin finish allows the medium of speed paints and contrast paints to spread more evenly. 
Nevertheless, the many flat areas of the Intercessor's power armor will present quite a challenge for either paint. When applying, I noticed that speed paints are a bit thinner and runnier than contrast paints and the medium pushes the paint into the recesses more aggressively, which helps to create a smoother result even on flat areas. On the other hand, I found contrast paint slightly easier to control because of their higher viscosity. I felt it was easier to put them on smaller details without accidentally spilling into adjacent areas. With both speed paints and contrast, you get the best result when you apply them generously. Wait a little while for them to settle and then soak up any excess with a damp brush where too much paint has gathered. This way, the medium can do its job and you'll get a smoother result and more pronounced shading. So here are the painted Blood Angel Space Marines. The red armor looks quite similar on both models, though there is a bit less pooling with blood red speed paint. The blue helmet looks much better on the speed paint version and I also think that grim black speed paint looks slightly better than black templar contrast on the bolt rifle. Zealot yellow speed paint is a bit more orange than Ayan and yellow but adds more definition to the chest eagle. On the back you can see that Basilican grey contrast on the undersuit looks more like a black wash while grey flawed grey speed paint adds more of a grey tint. The pouches painted with Saigor Brown are quite dark with only supple highlights, while the ones painted with dark wood speed paint have more definition. So, you can argue that speed paints produce more consistent results. However, there is one thing I don't like about speed paints that no one is really talking about. Even when they're dried, they will reactivate when you paint over them. Here are some spots I wanted to touch up with Gracier. And even though I applied multiple coats, the blood red speed paint keeps coming through, turning the grey sear pink. I reached out to the army painter and they told me it's due to the composition of the medium and most prominent with speed paints containing a high amount of yellow pigments. To find out which speed paints reactivate and which do not, I painted all of them on my trusty sheet of plastic card and let them dry for over 24 hours to make sure that really all of the medium has evaporated. I'm using Spaceship Exterior War Paint to paint over the left halves and Corox White over the right halves, which are both very light greys. As you can see, no matter which speed paint I'm painting over, the paint reactivates and discolors my acrylic paint. Neither war paints or citadel paints make a difference. Here's what my test sheet looks like after the first coat and here after the second coat. And while it gets better with some of the less yellowish colors, the speed paint still bleed through the paint layers above, even after the third coat. I found that a coat of varnish helps to fix the problem, but you have to be careful as the varnish can also reactivate the speed paints. It's quite annoying because it's not an issue at all with Games Workshop's contrast paints and limits the speed paints usefulness because the reactivation issue also means that speed paints aren't really suitable for glazing techniques. A single thinned down coat might be fine, but when you glaze multiple layers of speed paints over another, the paint will reactivate and mess up all your careful glazing work. As a saving grace, I found if you just apply a few thin highlights in a similar color to the speed paint you are painting over, the reactivation isn't much of an issue. I also tried to apply a second coat of speed paint. Here you can see hardened leather and slaughter red over blood red speed paint, as well as a wash of purple tone. And this turned out fine, as long as you don't scrub over the dried speed paint with too much force. So, you have to think about how you are planning to use speed paints and decide if it might be an issue for you or not. Let's proceed with some more tests and see how speed paints apply on a metallic base coat. I sprayed an intercessor with plate mail metal from the War Paints Air range, though you could also use plate mail metal color primer or lead belcher spray. As you can see, the speed paints go on very nicely. With colors like Salad Yellow, Sand Golem and Hardened Leather you can create interesting shades of copper and gold or go wild and try out bolder metallic hues like Plasmatic Bold on the right leg. The next Space Marine was sprayed with matte black color primer and then been given a senatal highlight of matte white from the Army Painters War Paints Air range. As you can see, applying speed paints over a senatal base coat can create awesome results in a short amount of time as the black to white gradient adds even more depth to the speed paint effect. By the way, you can also apply speed paint with an airbrush. 
However, like acrylic inks and contrast paints, they'll act as a transparent filter but won't run into the recesses like when applied with a brush. Unless you really smother the model with paint, which I wouldn't recommend. All of the shading on the backpack comes from the black to white zenithal base coat, while the orc skin speed paint just added a transparent green layer. Last but not least, what about the resistance of speed paints? Well, not exactly good. They rub off very quickly, so you should definitely varnish your models. But contrast paints have exactly the same problem, so this is a general issue of washes and inks of this kind. Now we have a good impression of speed paints, strengths and weaknesses. But how can speed paints compete with the other one coat painting solutions like instant colors from scale 75 and antithesis paints from watercolors? The first thing to understand is that the latter two paint ranges have a very different formula than contrast or speed paint. They are not based on dye, but on thin acrylic pigments. Think of Citadel, Nehalak Oxide or regular acrylic paints thinned with a lot of contrast medium. Well, I didn't like antithesis paints at all. They are far too thick, dry, quite patchy and don't settle well in the recesses. Instant colors are more interesting because the range has a lot of muted and unusual colors to choose from. However, I found to use them more as colored washes or glazes. As one coat paints, they are of limited use, as their pigment-based formula isn't as powerful as contrast or speed paints. They often need multiple coats to achieve a similar level of richness. Also, the pigment-based formula doesn't really work with zenithal shading, as the opaque pigments will gather in the dark recesses and make them brighter, which is not exactly what you want. More detailed reviews of contrast, antithesis and instant colors can be found on Tale of Painters. Links are in the description below. So before you hear my final judgment on speed paints, why don't you smash the like button, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks a lot and here is my verdict. Contrast paints are expensive, common flip top pots that are prone to drying out and their consistency is all over the place. They are a bit easier to control, have more colors to choose from and are very versatile as they also work really well as washes or glazes when thinned with contrast or Lamian medium. Speed paints come in dropper bottles with mixing boards pre-installed, they feel more consistent when you use them and create smoother results. However, there are less colors, they are runnier and slightly more difficult to control and they reactivate and bleed into your paint when you paint over them, which can be a big issue or no problem at all, depending on how you want to use them. Both paint ranges have their merits and it's hard for me to pick a winner, but we also have to consider the price. With the unit price of 4 euro or 3 pounds 75 pence over 6 euro 30 or 4 pounds 75 pence for a pot of contrast paint with the same 80 milliliters of paint, speed paints are about 35% cheaper, at least in euro. I can't deny there's a certain appeal to that and if the high price tag of contrast has deterred you so far, you should definitely give speed paint a try. All in all, Speed Paints gets a solid 7.5 out of 10 in my book. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you would like to learn something about enamel and oil washes, check out the video on the right. Thanks a lot and happy hobbying!